This is truly a golden moment for SpaceX's era of innovation as the company has built and launched the world's largest spacecraft, Starship, with features we could have never imagined before. However, the path to creating a new concept has not always been smooth. It's unbelievable that a government agency like the FAA has hindered the country's progress due to outdated, cumbersome, and downright unacceptable regulations. Perhaps the FAA has not yet realized the true importance of Starship. And so, we want to know, how will SpaceX wake the FAA up? Why will Starship launch be more important to the world than the FAA actually thinks? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On September 25th, Elon's tweet calling for FAA admin Mike Whitaker to resign is a major humiliation for the agency, as well as a stark warning to government agencies in general about their mismanagement investigating SpaceX's launches. However, that outburst was just the beginning. To further emphasize the significance of SpaceX, especially Starship, the person often seen as the driving force behind SpaceX's growth, Gwen Shotwell, had to speak out against the accusations that have caused delay in Starship's launches. During a hearing September 24th before the House Appropriations Committee, Shotwell made it clear that the EPA's actions in regulating the Starship Super Heavy Deluge system were nonsense. We work very closely with organizations such as the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, she said. You may have read a little bit of nonsense in the papers recently about that, but we're working quite well with them. On Tuesday, Shotwell maintained that the system, which she said resembles an upside-down showerhead, was licensed and permitted by TCEQ. EPA then came in afterward and didn't like the license or the permit that we had for that and wanted to turn it into a federal permit, which we're working on right now. The state agency has said that the company received a stormwater permit, a type that's usually quickly approved, but did not have the permit required for the discharge of industrial wastewater produced by launches. That type of permit requires significant technical review and usually takes almost a year to approve. The problem with this demand by both EPA and TCEQ is that SpaceX is not dumping industrial wastewater produced by launches. The deluge system uses potable water, essentially equivalent to rainwater, and thus does zero harm to the environment. In fact, a single rainstorm dumps far more water onto the tidal islands of Boca Chica than any of SpaceX's Starship launches. It turns out that alongside the FAA, we can also see that the EPA proves the political nature of this regulatory harassment. The unelected apparatchiks in the federal bureaucracy are hunting for ways to stymie and shut down SpaceX, and they will use any red tape they can find to do so, even if it makes no sense. They're doing this because they support the Democratic Party, and thus are abusing their power to hurt someone, Elon Musk, who now happens to oppose that party. Despite the intense pressure from certain agencies, Shotwell has maintained a firm stance. We are not afraid of regulation, she said. It helps keep businesses thriving as well as the community safe. All I'm saying is as this business grows, you'll probably enhance the regulatory environment, and there's just a caution that you really want to make sure that regulation does not impede progress. Shotwell also highlighted SpaceX's strong growth in Texas. Starship facility is a one-of-a-kind facility to make, test, and launch the most advanced rockets on the planet. Starship is capable of launching over 150 metric tons into Earth orbit, Shotwell added, outlining that as part of SpaceX's Starbase development, it's invested more than $3 billion over the last few years, with just a billion in outlays in Texas this past year. This is clearly a major development opportunity in the Texas region, and it also has importance in impacting the entire U.S. space industry. Starship has been promised to operate like an airplane, ushering in a new era for many essential jobs. You can imagine if planes were not reusable, very few people would fly. A 747 costs around 300 mil, and you'd need two of them for a round trip, Elon once said. Yet I don't think there's anyone that's paid half a billion dollars to fly. The reason is those planes can be used tens of thousands of times. And unlike any other orbital launch system, Starship would be fully reusable. This gives Starship the clear advantage in reducing the cost of sending cargo into orbit, precisely everything without exception. Want to launch a bunch of Starlinks into space? Well, it's too expensive. Are you crazy? Oh, there's a rocket that can launch 150 tons into orbit? Well, suddenly, that's now a whole lot cheaper. Elon has said that using fully reused rockets would cut launch costs to around $2 million a flight, or even to lower than a $1 million when Starship is reused for the fifth time. If launch costs drop to those expected levels, spacecraft could get to a higher consumption level, which in turn reduces manufacturing costs. Starship's impact will eventually ripple through the entire industry, leading to widespread cost reductions. However, lower costs are just one of the opportunities Starship brings to the table. 
This massive rocket has the volume to transport an entire home into space, allowing for the construction of far more complex satellites. For example, launching something massive like a deployable lunar telescope, once deemed impossible, is now financially feasible and could be done in a single launch. The adage, low Earth orbit is halfway to anywhere, still holds true today. Space exploration has always been hampered by the first step, getting off Earth. When we can significantly increase the payload to orbit, we unlock opportunities to lower the cost of other space missions through the economies of scale and the use of in-situation resources. Indirectly, Starship could benefit by the state of suborbital and orbital sciences bringing down space debris back on Earth. Space junk presents hazards to launching vehicles and operational orbiters, and any solution to reduce that crowding in the skies could be tremendously important. Such a cleanup mission could even see Starship recovering dead satellites in SpaceX's Starlink system as they grow in number. Honestly, with Starship's unique capabilities and its future missions, it's got the potential to render all other launch vehicles across the world obsolete. This could make SpaceX a dominant force in space and give the U.S. an advantage in the escalating competition with China for space supremacy. All told, NASA will pay SpaceX around $4 billion for two lunar landings. By comparison, NASA's SLS and the Orion developed for the Artemis have cost over $44 billion since 2006. That rocket system had its first test flight in 2022. According to NASA's current plan, SLS and Orion will transport astronauts from Earth to lunar orbit, while Starship completes the final leg of the journey, ferrying them from the Orion spacecraft to the moon's surface. However, Elon has admitted back in 2020 that he hopes SpaceX will fly hundreds of missions with satellites before attempting crewed flight. SpaceX also needs to build and test versions of Starship that will serve as refueling tankers. A lander must be equipped with life support systems, and NASA will require Starship to complete an uncrewed lunar landing test before allowing astronauts on board. Of course, SpaceX emphasizes that explosions could be an integral part of the company's development process, including early-stage rocket fire incidents, as a way to learn how to build better rockets faster than relying solely on ground tests. That's why allowing Starship to conduct multiple launches is so crucial. Not just a few launches, but a bunch. Especially at this point, when everything's ready, it needs to launch as quick as possible. And the FAA clearly does not realize that. Or they know it, but they choose to ignore the nation's common interests for their own benefit. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Pacific Ocean is China, and we rarely hear about that. It can be said that China has made some serious progress, especially lately, and to achieve that, besides the strength of science and technology, their management system is just quite good. Not only is it less affected by cumbersome processes, but the aerospace sector always gets favored, getting the best conditions and great support from the Beijing government. That's why the number of Chinese rocket launches is increasing more and more. And thanks to that, they've deployed many important missions in quite a short time, like lunar orbit missions, lunar landers, and lots more. In particular, in just over a year, they built their Tianyang space station. With a clear plan, along with the power of science and technology, as well as the support of their government, they're soon going to achieve their goals. What they have done has threatened the U.S.'s current leading position in the space race. The government and the FAA need to revisit the regulatory system now more than ever. If an agency isn't helping the aerospace industry develop and actually becomes a major barrier, should that agency still exist? We can assert that if the FAA, with its slow, cumbersome, and bureaucratic working style still does exist, perhaps none of Musk's, Americans', or humanity's dreams will ever come true. The moon, the Mars, the solar system, and the universe, everything will be beyond our reach. For the U.S., their previous absolute dominance is still being threatened by the opposition. And it's none other than the FAA, an agency that they established has put them in that situation. The coming years are going to be extremely important, which will decide who wins the space race and who will be the leader of the new civilization. With SpaceX, they simply need to do well with the Starship as they are. When the time comes, it'll be time for them to become the flagship to bring humanity to a new era. As for government agencies, reforms need to be carried out immediately, and barriers need to be handled, even eliminated, if they prevent the development for the country and humanity. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.